I know this is the longest time I have actually never really spoken. But WrestleMania 34 was was a very good show. I actually really, really enjoyed WrestleMania. Please, I don't want anybody starting. This is just my personal opinion. If you want to complain about something, you're fine. You can go ahead and do that. But WrestleMania, WrestleMania 34 was was a very good show, and there was shock. There was shocking outcomes. Things that there were some things that didn't make sense, but overall, it was a good show. Overall, it was a good it was a good show, and I really really liked it. I really really liked this show. So anyway, let's talk about the pre-show. I'm just gonna go over the pre-show real quick here. Uh, I actually typed up my thoughts on the pre-show here on, um, in, uh, on my uh, Facebook page here. Um, my quick thoughts, I'm going re to be repeating what I read off here. I quote, Quick thoughts on the pre-show. Matt Hardy wins the Battle Royal. To be honest, Matt winning made the most sense. Bray Wyatt, I heard Bray Wyatt help, helped Matt or something, which I have checked the replay, that happened. You know, Matt and Bray are going to be a pretty good team. Cruiserweight Championship, Cedric Alexander versus Mustafa Ali. Cedric wins the title. I want to tell you guys this, that I knew this was going to happen, which as I say here, I said I hate to say it, but this was predictable. I knew Cedric was going to win win from the beginning. Since Triple H runs 205 Live. And him making Cedric win it just made it predictable in my opinion. The final thing that happened was is the Women's Battle Royal. It was a fun match. I was so happy to see Peyton Royce. She had a great performance. I don't care what anybody thinks. Peyton Royce had a very good performance. She had a good showing. But in the end, Bailey. Thought she won, then out of nowhere, sorry, Bailey thought. Now it came down to ba Bailey and Sasha Banks, which at first I was thinking, oh great, we're going to be getting the obvious predictable outcome here. So Bailey then throws Sasha Banks out. When Sasha Banks sticks her hand out, they shake hands, and then Bailey throws Sasha out. Then out of nowhere, Naomi strikes, hitting Bailey with the glow. Yes. Yes, Naomi didn't even get eliminated. Naomi does the review and gets and gets the, and gets the win here. I thought it was very very unpredictable. I thought this was a very unpredictable match. Anybody could have won. Now I'm very glad. I am very glad that they gave it to someone who we didn't think was going to win. I'm very glad by that. I'm very glad by that. Now we'll move on to the main show. Seth Rollins versus The Miz versus Finn Balor. Now this was a very good match. I really enjoyed this match. I thought this match was really good. Finn Balor, in my opinion. I think Finn Balor really should have won, in my opinion. But hey... It was a good match overall. Seth Rollins got the win. He performed the curb stomp on The Miz to pin The Miz. One, two, three. Hopefully this means The Miz will go off on his hiatus and spend time with his child. And, you know, you know spend some time with his child and, you know, take some time off. You know, that's just what I expect from The Miz at this point. Charlotte Flair versus Oscar. For the SmackDown Women's Championship. 
I am going to be straight up honest with you guys right now. I did not expect what what we saw tonight. I didn't. I did not expect the outcome that we got tonight. And this is why, and this is why I love it. This is why I love it. Bad predictable outcomes is bad. Sometimes predictable outcomes are good, but when people go on record saying that oh predictability is so is, the predictability is so damn obvious. So that's why I love that's why I was very that's why I love this match. The unpredictability was there. But at first I was thinking it's possible that we would see the obvious victory here. But Charlotte Flair did a Spanish fly off the top rope. I thought it looked I thought I I really I'm not gonna blame this on Oscar, but I, I would blame it on Oscar, but she was a little too low. She was pretty low in my opinion, but Charlotte was a little too high. The spot would have been fantastic if Oscar and Charlotte were in the same position to perform the move. Because Charlotte was on the very top, top rope, and while Charlotte was Oscar was sitting on the second rope. So, 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 the, the, the spot could have been good. The spot could have been good, but obviously it wasn't good enough. But, I, I guess I'll give it an okay. But, Oscar. But, but Oscar continues to mount some offense. Then Charlotte Flair nails the natural selection. Then goes straight into the figure eight. And then. And then. The shocker is Oscar tapped. Oscar tapped out to Charlotte Flair's figure eight. It was, it was such a shock. It was the biggest shock, the first of the big shocks tonight. Oscar tapped out. Oscar tapped. To Charlotte, me and my brother, and 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 this is why. And this is what, and this is the one thing that I'm very happy about. I, and this is why I wanted Oscar to lose for quite some time. I wanted to see how Oscar would handle defeat. I wanted to see how well Oscar could handle defeat. This is why I wanted Oscar to lose to see how well she could handle defeat. She took her defeat very well, very well tonight. Uh, and that, and that alone, ladies and gentlemen, I've gained a lot of respect for Oscar. I've gained a lot of respect for Oscar when she accepted her defeat like a true fighter. She was undefeated for nearly three years, and she ran into someone who she just could not defeat. And, I, and, I, and I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud that Oscar accepted defeat like a like a true fighter. Now I know there's gonna be a lot of people complaining about Oscar losing, but 
Honestly, uh, honestly, I'm okay with this. This was a very big shock. This was a shock. This is why you gotta love shocking endings. This is why you gotta love shocking endings. Because when these types of things happen, you don't expect it. And, and I told my brother this. I told my brother this. Like, everybody was talking about the, how Oscar was going to win. WWE's YouTube page, I don't know how well people check on the YouTube page, but on the YouTube page, they were promoting the hell out of Oscar. She was at the arena. She was talking about how Charlotte's the underdog. She was, talk she was eating food. She was talking about where she went to train. something that really I'm not going to tell you guys it makes sense but at the same time though guys but at the same time though I was really really happy with the unexpected victory and that's what I love about that's what I love it was unpredictable it was really shocking so Oscar in the end Grabs a microphone and says, Charlotte was ready for Oscar and hugs her and hugs with her in the ring. Very, I'm very, I, I give Oscar a lot of respect. I give Oscar a lot of respect. I give her a lot of respect for doing that, man. I give her a lot of respect. I, 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 I am very, very proud of Oscar doing that. Because... I was expecting, if, I, if you want me to be honest, if you want me to be honest on how I would have booked this ending, I would have booked this ending the way, the way that happened with Shinsuke Nakamura. Oscar's ending, what happened in this match should have been what happened with Oscar and Charlotte. Oscar shouldn't be able to handle a loss and she turns heel because she lost and she couldn't, and she can't handle the, the defeat. But at the same time, though, handle not being able to handle defeat isn't really a part of Oscar. I really feel like as she's been undefeated for like two, nearly three years, you were thinking, well, if she loses and she shows and she be a sore loser because she lost for the first time, it shows you she can't handle losing. I think I thought the heel turn could have been possible, but then I thought, yeah, but. At the same time, it really doesn't, it really wouldn't matter because turning her heel just would really provide the streak was all for nothing. But if there is one thing, if there is one thing that I will say that is a complaint, is that they have really wasted the Royal Rumble. And, and this is the only thing I will tell you guys that I will be honest with you guys with is that Oscar winning the Royal Rumble really meant nothing now. Oscar outlasting, coming out at number 28, I believe. No, it wasn't 28. 25. Winning the entire Women's Royal Rumble. Having her eliminate Nikki Bella has all been wasted. It has all been wasted. And and, and in the end, the Royal Rumble is now just another accomplishment on the record books for Oscar. They, they, they had Oscar make all this history on becoming the first ever Women's Royal Rumble winner. Only to have her tap out to Charlotte Flair. But in the end, guys, I'm okay with this. I am really, really am okay with this. Oscar showed a lot of respect in defeat. And I'm very proud of her for doing that. I go from shock to absolute anger in this next match. Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, Rusev, and Jinder Mahal! I, I was going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell you guys, I didn't care who won this match, as long as it wasn't bloody Jinder Mahal. And who ended up getting the win? Jinder freaking Mahal. Jinder bloody Mahal ended up getting the victory. He does a colossus and pins Rusev. 
What did I? What, 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 what did I tell you guys? What did I tell you guys that Rusev was in this match to eat the pin? But I really didn't think that WWE were going to give this to to bloody Jinder Mahal. But at the, at the same time, I shouldn't be surprised because Vince McMahon has an affection with this guy. Bloody steroids. Jinder Mahal beats, so Jinder Mahal wins, and he's the new United States champion. Disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Now I've got to put up with this guy, champion again. At least he didn't pin Randy Orton. I guess that's the one thing I can be happy about. But he pinned Rusev. All I'll say is good, I guess I can, all I can say is that this is a goodbye to Rusev Day. You know, I hope Rusev... I guess we can wish, uh, I guess we could say our goodbyes to Rusev and Rusev Day, and, uh, you know, enjoy your time in the unemployment, because I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be getting his release, I'm pretty sure he'll be getting his release very, very soon, so. So that is the one thing that, so that's one thing there. R Rusev's done. Rusev's done, guys. He, he, he's going to lose. Oh, well, well, he did lose them. I'm sorry. I said the wrong word. He is going to be released. He's going to be released, guys. It's over. Rusev Day is over. WWE have officially killed Rusev Day. Rusev Day is officially killed with a colossus. Randy Orton didn't kill Rusev Day with the RKO. Jinder Mahal killed Rusev Day with the colossus. Kurt Angle, Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Honestly, this match... This match was actually very, very good. 20 minutes, very good. Ronda Rousey, you know. I know I've been very critical on Ronda Rousey for the past few... I know I've been very critical on Ronda Rousey for the past few months since she arrived. But she really impressed me tonight. She really impressed me. She really impressed me. Her selling was... You know, it was okay. But her ring talents... What the hell? Oh. My phone battery. Better charge that. Better charge it. But ultimately, uh, you know, it was a good match. You know, it was a lot of good spots. Really enjoyed the match. I thought the match was pretty good for what it was. What it was worth. Ronda Rousey stood down with Triple H. I thought that was pretty good. You know, I, I predicted that 90% of this match was going to be all Triple H and Kurt Angle, and and boy was I wrong, and, and I'm glad WWE proved me wrong here. Ronda Rousey had a pretty good performance, Stephanie McMahon had a pretty good performance, like all, all, all four of them had a very good performance here. But in the end, it was uh, kind of obvious on how the match was going to end. The match ended with Ronda Rousey making Stephanie McMahon tap out to the armbar. And hopefully that wasn't a legit armbar, because if it was, Ronda Rousey should be fined and suspended. Because Brock Lesnar did that shit years ago, and he got in trouble for it. So hopefully that armbar wasn't as dangerous. Bludgeon Brothers, The Usos, and The New Day. This was a five-minute squash, and this was a pretty and this was a pretty hard-hitting match. Nice and quick as well. Nice and quick as well. But Bludgeon Brothers got the win. 
and I'm very, very ha happy for the Bludgeon Brothers. They really deserved it. They really did deserve it. I thought their performance was very good. And yeah, I I'm guessing uh, the teams that could possibly beat them when they arrive on the main roster is pretty much going to be either the Authors of Pain or Sanity. One of those two teams are going to be the ones to take down uh, the Bludgeons. Then we had, and also by the way, after uh, Oscar and Charlotte's match, John Cena heard that The Undertaker was here and he was waiting for him. So John Cena was in the crowd watching and then he gets in the ring, he comes out later on and he, was, and he wants The Undertaker. Elias comes out, gets a lot of heel heat because everybody thought it was The Undertaker. As John Cena's leaving, his music then stops as he's walking up the ramp the undertaker appears i really liked the undertaker's entrance i really wish we got the american badass undertaker but hey i do appreciate wwe for giving us the undertaker this match was a two minutes and 45 seconds that's how long this match went for the undertaker just obliterated john cena john cena felt like a jobber tonight. He got squashed tonight. John Cena got squashed tonight. He loses very, very easily. He eats a choke slam. He went for the five knuckle shuffle. The Undertaker sat up and John Cena, the way John Cena sold uh, The Undertaker sitting up is that he went for the... And, and then um, he, then he runs into a chokeslam, then he gets tombstoned in two minutes. He, he loses in two minutes. That would have been possibly John Cena's shortest match in WWE history. The Undertaker beats him within two minutes. Is this the end of John Cena? I don't know. So I have to wait and find out on Raw. Find out on Raw tomorrow. But that was a very... It was kind of obvious that this... I kind of felt like this was going to be a short one. They weren't going to make it too long. But The Undertaker, you know, he wins. And he adds John Cena to the list of names that he has beaten at WrestleMania besides Lesnar and Reigns. Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. This was a another brilliant match. I really enjoyed this. Daniel Bryan spent most of the time knocked out because Owens and Zayn attacked Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn from behind. And on all my SmackDown Live review, I said that what they said about Brie Bella really wanted me to see these two guys get their asses kicked and that's exactly what really got me excited for this match wanted to see these two assholes get what they deserved for what they said daniel bryan was very good in his return and he in the end of this match he got and in this match daniel bryan hits the running knee on Sami Zayn and and then he nails the yes lock on he gets the yes lock on Sami Zayn and Sami Zayn taps out Brian and Shane win Owens and Zayn will be heading over to Monday Night Raw possibly on Raw after Mania they'll be heading over to Raw and 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 and, and, and I could potentially see them if there's anybody I think they could win the Raw Tag Team titles I think it could be Owens and Sami Zayn. If you want to keep these two guys together, put these two guys as World Tag Team Champions. I think that would be pretty good. This is where I... This is this, this was pretty much a boring match. It was kind of predictable. Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. Now, my original thought is that the reason why they had this match come on later... I was thinking, okay, maybe it's possible they're having Carmella cash in. I was waiting for Carmella to cash in on the Charlotte Oscar match, but because 
Charlotte Flair tapped out Oscar. They obviously wanted to give a special moment to them. Nia and Bliss was a pretty boring match. The only spot that I thought was pretty good was Alexa Bliss doing the Twisted Bliss off the top rope to the outside. I, I thought that was pretty good. Overall, there's not really much else. Alexa Bliss gets beaten here, which is kind, which was kind of a uh, kind of obvious. Alexa Bliss loses. Nia Jax is the new Raw Women's Champion. I, I, I am very, very surprised that Carmella did not come out and cash in her money to bank. Because in the Battle Royal, she was the first person out in the Battle Royal. She was the first person eliminated in the Battle Royal. She got tossed out by everybody in the match. She, 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 she did her usual, uh, look at me, I've got the money in the bank. Then she gets tossed out by every woman on the roster... And I was thinking, okay, the reason why they did that is obviously so then that way they could prepare her for her cash-in. I don't understand why she didn't cash-in. Why would you do that to Carmella? Why would you have her get eliminated? Why would you have her be the first person eliminated in the Women's Battle Royal if you weren't going to do anything with her? I couldn't believe it. Now, they could be saving it for Raw after Mania, or they could be saving it to... Where she cashes in on Charlotte on SmackDown. Now that was my second thought. They could be waiting to waiting for the right time to have her cash in. I don't want Carmella becoming the first person in history to hold the Money in the Bank briefcase and not cash it in. Do you want to know what happens to those when they don't cash in? They forfeit their briefcase. She has to cash it in until July this year. If she doesn't cash it in within that time, she loses her briefcase. So she's obviously, so she's either, since she didn't cash it in tonight, the last opportunity for WWE to have her cash it in is the nights after Wrestle, is the nights after Mania on Raw or SmackDown Live. Nia Jax got the win here. Kind of obvious that she was going to win. Hopefully they send Alexa Bliss back over to SmackDown because she's kind of, like, Alexa's done everything on Raw. There's really no need for her to be on Raw. I felt like Alexa was definitely a lot better on SmackDown, so... Uh, or you could either just... Like, what else are you going to do with Alexa? I mean, like, like what else is legitimately possible left for you to do with Alexa Bliss on Monday Night Raw? There's really nobody... There's really nothing left you could do for Alexa on Raw. So, I'd say move her over to SmackDown and try and have her win the SmackDown title. Or just find her something to do on Raw. Because what is she going to do? Since she's not champion anymore, what do you legit think she's going to do? What do you legit see her doing? She's probably most likely going to fade away into an obscurity. So I think Alexa Bliss moving over to SmackDown would be a good decision. Good decision. Shocker number two. Shocker number two. Shocker number two. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. 20 minutes and This match went for 20 minutes and 20 seconds. I was kind of... Do, do, do I really think this match really lived up to the hype? Not really, no. I honestly don't really think it did live up to the hype. But the shocking thing here is that AJ Styles hit the phenomenal forearm. Nakamura kicks out. Nakamura is about to go for the King Shasta, but then he, but then AJ Styles counters the the King Shasta into a Styles clash, and and AJ Styles gets the pinfall victory here. He defeats Nakamura. Both. Royal Rumble winners, both Royal Rumble winners, were defeated. The, the Royal Rumble has become irrelevant now. The Royal Rumble has become irrelevant. Both Rumble winners lost. But the interesting thing here is that when Nakamura lost, he, 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 he was like, Bowing down to AJ Styles, he was, he, he was, he was like, got bowing. He was going on his knees and 
he, he, he grabbed the, the, the WWE title from the referee and he went down on one knee and he lifted the title up to AJ Styles. AJ Styles grabbed the title, he lifted the title up in the air, and, it, and then Nakamura, and this legit dropped my jaw. I'm telling you guys this. I was literally jaw dropped by this. Shinsuke, low blows, AJ Styles. He legitly low blows AJ Styles and starts beating the shit out of him. Shinsuke Nakamura has turned heel. Uh, I'm in shock. I'm in shock by this. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel about this, to be honest. Is Nakamura really a heel type? Well... Uh, well, I guess we'll see right now, since I'm guessing this is his first time ever being a heel, because I don't ever, I don't think he's ever been a heel outside of WWE. But AJ Styles won. AJ Styles won, and Nakamura turned heel. Now this one was a, uh, now, now this was just a waste of my time, in my opinion. Braun Strowman. Now I, I respect WWE for doing this. Because it's for charity and all. This is the only thing I will I will give. I respect. I respect that they did this for charity. And that's the one thing I will give WWE. I respect them for doing this for charity. But at the same time though. I really don't understand why. Besides charity. So, Braun Strowman's tag team partner was a 10-year-old boy named Nicholas. And Braun Strowman single-handedly beat the bar by himself without having this kid even wrestle. And, and Braun Strowman and this little kid is now World Tag Team Champions. Now, I don't know what the hell they're going to do. We all know this little kid is not going to wrestle... So, what the hell are they going to do? Are they going to strip Braun Strowman of the tag team titles? Or are they legitimately going to tell him, or on Raw tomorrow, they're going to tell him, look, you need to get a real partner. A little kid is not going to help you be tag team partner. You need a tag team partner. Hopefully the bar go over to SmackDown, but this, this was just a waste of my time. This whole, the, the, the whole hype of Braun Strowman wanting to find a partner I thought it was interesting, but I really didn't, I, I understand they did this for charity, but at the same time though, I really thought this was stupid. And finally guys, the main event. So I'm, so I'm going to be almost done here. In a long review. Finally the last match. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. I was expecting the worst. And I think a lot of us were expecting the worst here. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar did five, five F5s. And this guy continued to kick out. He continued to kick out one F5, two F5s, three F5s, four F5s, and even one through the table. He, this guy kicked out of five F5s. Brock Lesnar kicked out of four spears, because Roman hit the spear on him four times. He survives Superman punches. Brock does ten suplexes and one more F5, which was the sixth F5. And also... Well, before the 6th F5, he takes his gloves off and he starts pounding Roman Reigns in the face. And Roman Reigns had blood coming all over, off all over his face. And it looked like Roman was about to win. But then Roman Reigns, then Brock Lesnar hits his 6th F5. And wins! And wins! Brock Lesnar retained the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Vince McMahon just I can't believe it. 
I can't believe Vincent Mann actually did this. I, I was expecting the worst here. I was expecting Roman Reigns to, to be to be crowned. To be, to be crowned Universal Champion. But no, he wasn't. That was the biggest shock. That was such a shock. So who is going to beat Brock Lesnar? Is Simone Joe going to come back and he's going to be the one to beat Brock? I, 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 I don't know. I literally don't know. I can't believe what I'm seeing. But anyway, guys. That's it. So that's your WrestleMania. I thought WrestleMania was... I thought it was a very good show, in my opinion. Besides... Like, look, guys. I know people would be angry with Oscar and Nakamura losing. But... Overall, guys, I think we all should, collectively, together, really enjoy WrestleMania. And... And really think of think of the positives here. Yes, there were some negatives. The match order really was a bit weird. Oscar losing and Nakamura losing, completely burying the Royal Rumble really didn't mean a lot. But ultimately, guys, it really didn't concern me that much. I really enjoyed WrestleMania. I really enjoyed WrestleMania. Thank you all for joining me for my WrestleMania review. I hope you guys liked it. Hit, hit the like button. Comment your thoughts down below. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. And be sure to follow me at pballantine95 to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on on Twitter. Thank you all for joining me. And I'll see you guys for Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Two sweet out to you.